You're listening to the Prosperity Report Love and Money Podcast. Find out what every couple needs to become a winning team in love and money. We bring you actionable ideas from expert therapists and experienced married couples, helping you stay happily married longer. Stay tuned until the end. We'll leave you with a tip you can start using today in our five-minute activation segment. Now, here's your host, best-selling author, speaker, and psychotherapist, Kane Quarter. This episode is brought to you by my course called Learn to Control the Controllable. If you'd like to learn how to control the controllables in your life, if you want to learn how to stop struggling and receive your life, your blessings with grace and ease, this is the course for you. Go to kanaecorder.com slash meditation dash course to get involved. If you are struggling against the universe, forcing things, pushing, this is the course for you. It's really easy. Your goal to kanaecorder.com slash meditation dash course. You'll download the Insight Timer app. It's free and you'll get the course. It's just a few dollars for a big impact on your life. Watch your life unfold as you begin to have more self-awareness, self-acceptance, find confidence, which is my favorite thing in the whole world. It's time. Embrace this. It's here for you. So if you're ready to control the controllables in your life, go to kanaecorder.com slash meditation dash course. I'll see you there. And don't let the word meditation scare you. I walk you through the whole thing and it's so easy. For just a few dollars, you can start controlling the controllable today. And now let's get on with our show. Welcome to Prosperity Report, Love and Money Podcast. Today, I have a guest here for you that's going to talk all about taxes and getting it right. You'll be so informed by the end of this. She's very protective of taxpayers and she really likes to give it straight. So it's easy and correct. Please join me in welcoming my guest today, Larissa Humphrey. Hey, Larissa. Hey, Kame, thanks for having me. You are welcome. Thanks for taking time out of your extra busy schedule. Larissa is very, very busy and successful. She has a lot of people asking for her time and expertise. So I'm so glad that you had some time for us today. You are so welcome. I'm glad to do it because people need to know what they can do to stop having a problem with taxes. It is possible. I know. So that's what I'm so excited to talk about. So before we get into taxes, I have this question that I ask every guest, and that is, what is your idea of prosperity or what does the word prosperity mean to you? Prosperity means being able to do whatever it is you want to do. Like me, I love doing taxes. So I'm excited to wake up in the morning and get to the office and get into my next case. The prosperity part is having or making enough money to afford to do what I want to do and not having to do things that I just really don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And many of our listeners are on that path to getting to their purpose and doing what they really want to do. A lot of them are doing what they have to do right now until they're able to make that transition and do what they want to do. So that's so awesome that you're able to do the thing that you love. It's incredible to get paid to do what you love to do. You are so right. Mm, It's (laughs) fabulous. (laughs) Yes. So we're going to have so many questions for you. (laughs) I'll try to keep them within a few minutes. So we're not, this could be like an hour, two hour long episode, (laughs) but I'm going to try to keep it short and just get to the stuff that you really think can help people, especially because this is the end of the year. I want to start with describing who you are so people know who they're talking to. So tell me a little bit about yourself professionally and personally. Well, I'd like to start with telling how I got into this business. I saw on TV that Ross Perot paid less than $2,000 in personal income tax. 
And, you know, at that time, Ross Perot was running for president. You know, he's a billionaire, the main person in EDS, a technology company. Mm. Well, that same year, I made $35,000 and I paid more than $4,000 in personal income taxes. So I had an attitude <laughs> because how can I be struggling and he be, you know, a billionaire and I'm paying more taxes than him? Yeah, still got a problem. I hear myself getting upset. Uh, <laughs> all these 28 years later, I'm still having a problem with that. So I got busy. I found out what it takes and how it is possible for that man to pay so little taxes. And I did this by, number one, taking some income tax classes. I worked for the IRS. And then I became a certified tax coach. And what that is, that means I spend my time with the other certified tax coaches in the country. There are less than 200 of us right now. And what we do is look for ways for people to not pay taxes. We search the tax code looking for all the advanced tax strategies that there are to help people. The next thing is I became an enrolled agent. That means I'm licensed to practice before the IRS just like an attorney would be. So mm. I know the tax code. I'm also working on a master's degree in taxation, about halfway through with that. And I am the author of eight best-selling books on taxes, all telling people all the different ways they can use to not pay taxes. Wow. Yeah. So we're definitely going to have to let them know about how to get your books after this episode. But tell me a little bit more about an enrolled agent. Like I've heard that term. And of course, I know you, so I know what an enrolled agent is. But I imagine that people are going to have some questions. When would I need an enrolled agent? Well, if you are having some sort of tax issue, I can represent you. Like, well, this morning I got a guy who owes $60,000 to the IRS. So what I'm going to do is research his case, see what type of programs that the IRS already has set up that he would qualify for, and hopefully negotiate that down to zero. Ooh. With my best case scenario, one time I had a guy who owed half a million dollars, and I got him down to zero. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I want you on my side. If I ever I owe <laughs> Well, I am right here to help you. Now, everybody doesn't qualify for the zero status, mm -hmm. but I had one guy, he owed about $25,000 and we negotiated him down to paying $59 a month for 10 years. And it came out to uh, right around $7,000. So he was pleased because, you know, he could handle $59 a month. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And it was a lot less than paying the whole 25 he owed. So Absolutely. whatever the case is, I can guarantee you that I will get you the best case scenario for your position. Yes, I do know that for sure. Larissa is my tax person, so she does protect me as well, which is part of the reason why she's here, because we've had some really good conversations and I knew she was a person that can deliver for you guys. I also want to say that that $59 a month, that reminds me of a scenario that I had. And you know my story that somebody did my taxes who didn't know what they were doing years ago. And I ended up basically owing the IRS after his mistake. And on my own, I negotiated this. But of course, if I've known you back then, I could have done much better at negotiating because I didn't owe $25,000 and I still ended up paying sixty. dollars eight dollars a month until it was paid off so I end up oh, paying wow. all of it and you probably could have helped me pay less but I say that to say a lot of times people are scared of the IRS like they're avoiding it they're not making those phone calls or they're not taking the phone calls or they're not opening the letters what would you say to somebody like that who's just like avoiding it oh come on grow up <laughs> if you're sending you letters especially certified letters you better open them. The IRS is not playing with you. I have one client that brings me the letters so I can open them. She won't open them, but at least she's doing something. 
You've yeah. got to face the facts here because it can only get worse if you don't do anything about it. Yep, that is so true. In fact, I have a story. I had a patient in my office. We were doing financial therapy with her. And that was one of the things that she was coming to therapy for was because she wouldn't open them. And she was just so afraid and it was like anxiety and just, you know, stuff coming up for her. So we worked through some things and finally got her to open them. Now we did talk about her bringing them into the office and opening them there, but she said she wanted to do it on her own. And she opened the bill after all of this stress and anxiety and the bill was $67. Oh, now see. <laughs> <laughs> but the IRS is so scary for people. What would you it. say to people who are just so afraid of the IRS? There's nothing to say. It's no reason to be afraid. Mm. You've got to face whatever's going on in your life any way it goes. Yeah. So even if it is bad news, you can always bring it to somebody like me who can help you get out of it. Absolutely. And believe it or not, I called the IRS once. I was a little nervous being an entrepreneur and, you know, having to pay taxes usually every year until, <laughs> until I figured, you know, we got it all figured out. Thank you, Larissa. Having to pay so much in taxes, just having that phone call used to bring me a certain amount of anxiety. And I was on the phone with one gentleman when I remember kind of rushing and trying to get through all my questions and he could hear me like ruffling through my papers. And he's like, Hey, Miss Gordon, like, slow down. I'm here for you. You know, just no reason to rush, no need to be nervous. And if anybody on this side of the line makes you feel nervous, remind them that they work for you. I work for you. So I can answer all your questions. Just take your time. I was blown away because that is not usually how a phone call goes with the IRS. No, it's not. I was not. so thankful that he was that gracious with me. Because from there on, I didn't have that same nervousness when I called them. And now that I have you behind me, of course, I have no nervousness. But that, those, those words just really soothe and like made it easier for me to have a conversation with them because people are really afraid to call mm -hmm. the IRS. They feel like they're against them and they're, you know, they're going to do their best to hurt them. Well, when you engage me to uh, work for you, then you don't have to talk to the IRS anymore. Mm. I do all of that. So that don't is, even have to worry about it. That is really good news. In financial therapy, usually when someone talks about their idea of prosperity, a lot of it, and I think you alluded to this, is it's a bit of freedom and like it's less stress, worry-free, just peace. And to have somebody on your team that can make you feel at peace or at ease or give you that peace of mind, that is golden. Mm -hmm. what That's is, what I do. Absolutely. I can attest to that. <laughs> Before I shift to talking specifically about couples, we'll just stick to overall people. How does one protect themselves from overpaying in taxes? And I get working with you, definitely. But what are some of the things that one can look for to make sure they're not overpaying in taxes? Well, you need to make sure that you are finding all of the deductions that you are legally entitled to take. I have a list that I give to my clients so they'll know all the different things they need to keep track of and be able to provide proof of when they do their taxes. So that's the biggest, the most impactful way to be sure you're not paying too much in taxes. Mm, yes. So really, you're saying that they need to be aware, because some of the people listening are those do-it-yourself people. They really want to try and do it themselves. So they need to be clear on what they legally can deduct. Now, in right. the event they're like me and they don't want to do it themselves, I got enough on my plate. I need to hire a professional to handle that. Somebody who loves it, who wakes up in the morning thinking about <laughs> taxes. <laughs> <laughs> excited too <laughs> because i do not so i will hire somebody like you let's say they don't get a chance to work with you how do i know that my tax preparer is getting all my deductions because as as we know in real life that happened to me where my tax preparer was not getting all my deductions and she was a cpa so you know she had the credentials but it didn't mean she had the knowledge this is true I find that all the time when people come in with their taxes and a CPA has done them, 
I normally find they get back another $3,000. So that might be about 10 or 12,000 in deductions that they just didn't even put on the return. The only way to know is you have to be responsible to know what things you can write off. That's the only way you would know. Otherwise, the CPA will just do whatever they want to do and throw it at you. That's just that. Yeah. So how do you find that out? Because the tax code is what, 2,000 pages long? Am I really going to read? I wish it was 2,000. 73,000 last count I heard and still (laughs) growing. No, you're probably not going to do it. Then you need to go to somebody like me who specializes in finding all the write-offs. Right. And let me say this. I'll give a hint because what I found as I was looking, because when I moved to Georgia, I had a really great person in Chicago. And then when I moved to Georgia, I looked for a new person. And one of the things that I noticed was that they would ask me questions. Like, well, what do you usually do? Or what do you want? Kind of like that. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's not the questions that (laughs) Carolyn asked. That's not the questions that I'm used to being asked. So why are you asking me these questions? Like, what do I want to get back or whatever? I'm like, I want to get everything that I deserve. That's what I Mm -hmm. want to get. But I didn't have to educate myself. And I take responsibility for that because I did have somebody so good at protecting me and taking care of me. And I kind of pride myself on that. Like, that's my life. I try to get the smartest people around me, some people who do the thing that they do really well, because I know I am drop dead good at what I do. So like surrounding myself with people who are drop dead good at what they do and just pay them or hire them or work with them to do what they do. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do that in the beginning. So when I got to Georgia, I noticed those were the questions being asked. If the tax preparer or the CPA is asking you questions, like what do you want? Then that's probably a clear sign that they're not the person to get you the most. (laughs) How funny. (laughs) (laughs) So let's also discuss taxes from a couple standpoint. I know that some couples want to file separately for whatever reason. Maybe it's their second marriage. They had a bad first marriage. Maybe that's just all they know. Or maybe they just think that they're doing the right thing. So you can file separate or you can file married. What are the benefits in either? Well, normally married filing separate is the worst tax filing status. Reason being, It limits your credits. Some credits you're not eligible for at all. It's just a bad status. Because unless you've got a situation where one person owes taxes from before they were married or has a bill somewhere, Mm -hmm. then you should file joint. Joint is much better because you're able to get all of the write-offs. For Mm -hmm. example, if you itemized deductions. If one spouse can itemize deductions, the other spouse has to itemize deductions also in order for both of them to file separately. So that might leave one spouse with zero standard deduction, you know, Mm. and that's going to make them pay more. Yep. I see that. So yeah, the main thing is stay away from that Mary filing separate. It's just not a good idea. Okay. Got it. Now, many of my listeners, they may have a job and they have like a side business, but some of them, like the one spouse works and then one spouse has a business. Talk to me about some of the things that maybe they should be thinking about when filing taxes and what they could be doing throughout the year to make sure that they're getting the most out of, because this is really beneficial if I understand it correctly, right? Depends on what's going on in the business. Ah, okay. Now, if they are making some money, then maybe the spouse with the job could cover health insurance. So that helps on that side. There are many times that the spouse with the business can create some new deductions using the spouse with the job. Mm -hmm. So it all just depends on what's going on. Now, if the business is not making any money and is paying out more money than it is taking in, then the loss from the business would decrease the amount of taxes that the spouse with the job would have to pay. Oh, okay. 
Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Sure does. So yeah, it's a good combination. We have good success with people in that situation. That's good to hear because many of my listeners, their idea of prosperity involves becoming an entrepreneur, owning their own business, even if it is a side business. That is where their passion is. That is what they wake up in the morning excited about a lot of times. And they're not able to do that just yet. So it's good to know that you can get some benefit out of it, even if you're not all the way there yet. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is go ahead and start that business. If that's what you're thinking about, that's where your passion is, because it can help you now and later. Awesome. I'm so glad you said that. That's going to be our quote for it, because I always choose a quote for every episode. And the best thing to do is go ahead and start that business. There goes some activation for you guys. So if you're thinking about it, go ahead and do it. And so I'm going to move into this being the end of the year. What if they do it now? Like say they're listening to this episode and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it. And they get it in by the end of the year. Does that benefit them at all? Or, you know, is waiting to the new year okay, are they not going to miss out on anything? There is no point in waiting. Okay. (laughs) The sooner you start the business, the sooner you reach your goals, the sooner you succeed, the sooner you become prosperous. So go ahead and do it now because it takes a lot of thinking, planning, activity, trying to find new clients. There's a lot to running a business. So you might as well get started now. Yeah. And get like, the admin stuff out of the way because I'm a very visionary, creative kind of person. And the admin stuff, again, going back to my hire the best, my admin stuff can weigh me down. It's not what I wake up in the morning to do. But like sometimes you just got to do it. You've got to get the admin stuff done. And so getting that out the way so you can go through and get the fun stuff in. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. So what is one thing that someone can do before the end of the year to better prepare or to make sure they're going to save on taxes? And maybe I should ask that another way. Like, what do you see people miss out on just because they didn't prepare? Like, they're going to come to you in February or March, and if they would have just done this by the end of the year, it would have been better for them. Well, if they own a business, the place I see people missing out on deductions the most is mileage. Mm. They don't keep track of their mileage, which today we have all these mileage apps that you can use, which you don't have to do anything. It just tracks you everywhere you go. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to keep track of that mileage. But what you could do right now is go back and try to look at your calendar and see if you can figure out where you went to try to recreate your mileage log. If you got audited, the IRS would ask you to recreate your mileage log. So this is something that's 100% legal, but you do need to have some idea because Mm -hmm. I asked people, okay, I told them get the app. They got it. And when they came in to see me, they forgot they had it. Well, I asked them, well, what do you think your mileage is? And one guy said, I probably did about 4,000 miles during the year. When we looked at the app, he did 37,000 miles. I said, Mm. how could you make, what? Were you there when you were driving? It was so crazy. (laughs) How are you missing that? Because they don't know. They're just pulling a number out the end. Pulling a number, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Because the great thing is, at least with the Mile IQ, that's the one I use. And I do like that you don't even have to do much, but you just open it up and then you swipe, swipe right, swipe left. Business, personal, business, personal. Just tell it which way you were going. Were you going to do some business or are you going to do some personal? Going to the right. grocery store, personal. Oh, wait, but was I going to the grocery store to buy stuff for the event? Yeah, I do like that part because I did used to have to like write it down in one of those books or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was challenging. So it feels much better to let the app do it for you. And oh, the yeah. listeners that are listening are total app people. So they'll definitely be on the app getting that. And they have like a free version to start with. If you don't know if it's right for you, you can start with the free version and then upgrade and start to pay. But especially for people who do a lot of driving as part of their work, 
You mm-hmm. definitely don't want to miss that. 37,000 miles. Totally nuts. <laughs> he, he was very embarrassed and he should have been because that was <laughs> crazy. So he's not being a responsible taxpayer mm-hmm. because it's not right for you to underclaim what you did during the year. That's not right. That's just as bad as overclaiming, you know? Mm, you need to yeah. make sure you get all of your expenses. So the next thing I would say for people to do to get it together before time to file is start looking at all of your expenses. Are you paying everything through your business bank account? Because that's where the IRS would look if you were to be audited. Mm. So that's major. What did you spend money on? There are many things you probably forgotten. I don't remember what I did on January 3rd, but I'm sure I did some business stuff. <laughs> right. So you can start looking at your bank account to see what expenses there were. Or even if you did them in your personal account, you can still write them off, but you've got to make note of them. Mm. Okay. somewhere to say, okay, yeah, I didn't have my business card with me. So I had to pay for this iPad with my personal card. Well, you can still get a write-off for that, but you got to remember to tell your tax person that you made that purchase. Yeah, I get it. What I hear is that a lot of this is around tracking. Yep. Like, so what are some of the, I guess, tools or tips, resources that people can use to track. I mean, I have mine (laughs) and I'm definitely open to hearing more just in case it's something we haven't talked about yet. But what are some ways that people can really make sure that they are tracking? So we got the app, the mileage app, anything else? See, when we do people's taxes, most of it is we have to do their bookkeeping. So Mm. we just make sure they're doing everything through their business account or a business credit card. Yes. Um, That's what I've been doing. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) mm -hmm. Otherwise, let me think, what are some people using that seems to be good? I've got a couple of clients using something called Fresh Books. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of the listeners that are entrepreneurs are using Fresh Books these days, mm -hmm. but it's not a bookkeeping. It really is like an invoicing. I try to make that clear to people. Mm -hmm. Know that FreshBooks is not bookkeeping. It's not going to reconcile for you, but at least it does have some tracking ability so you know how much came in and maybe what went out. What about QuickBooks? Is that still a good tool to use? Yeah, that's what we use, but it's difficult to set up. That's where I see people having the most problem. They don't get that that chart of accounts right, and so the whatever they enter doesn't come outright. That's the problem with QuickBooks. Right. Like so, you say, garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So initially, I, you should have a professional accountant review your chart of accounts to make sure you've got everything set up correctly. And then once you do that, if you can handle the data entry of it, you're fine. Okay. That makes sense. So what I hear then is when it comes to QuickBooks, if you are not a QuickBooks like representative or whatever, or you yourself are not an accountant or a bookkeeper, then you may want to have somebody check it for you, make sure it's right, maybe even set it up for you. I'm sure there are people you can pay to do that for you. If you decide to run the day-to-day, at least start with having a professional set it up so you can make sure that it's right. Because even though Mm -hmm. you're tracking it every day, if it was never set up properly in the first place, you still don't have a good system. Right. Yeah. Uh, we've had people come in and their setup was so bad, we couldn't even fix it. We just had to start over. Wow. Which came with a lot of expense because it's a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, whereas you would have just paid just a little to make sure it was correct in the beginning, when we got to it and had to redo it, it had gone crazy, just astronomical because we had to totally redo everything. So, yeah. Wow. So I have two more questions for you. Now, you talked a lot about representing people in front of the IRS and, you know, you helping them through those past tax mistakes. How do you repair going forward when you have had a tax challenge? What does the future look like for somebody like that? 
The future is always bright. Just because you made a mistake in the past doesn't mean you have to keep making that mistake. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I do as a certified tax coach is create a tax plan for my clients, which consists of a system of advanced tax strategies that will ensure a decreased tax liability. So just because you owe last year doesn't mean you're going to owe this year. One guy that I had just talked to said, okay, last year he got a $24,000 refund because of the tax plan that I set up, which decreased his balance from $90,000 down to $60,000. Mm. So I was like, really? Because I didn't realize what had happened. <laughs> yeah. So it was really a good thing. And yeah. so- the plan was to just keep going that way, but then he decided not to be in business anymore and to go back to a W-2 job. So we don't know how that's going to turn out for this year because we don't know what kind of money he's going to be paying in, but whatever he's eligible for, it'll keep knocking that bill down every year till he gets to zero. Wow. That is so awesome. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen a lot. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 28 so years. Yes, that's a long time. So with that 28 years, my last question is, what advice would you give to couples especially? Because the last question I always ask is, what is the best marriage advice you ever received? But given your experience, I'd love to know what advice you'd give to couples when it comes to combining these finances and taxes. Be honest. Mm. I have seen so many married couples that come into my office. I start asking questions and then one spouse is totally surprised that the other one had this money or took that money out of a retirement plan or made X amount of dollars doing a side job. It's just not cute. If you're married, why aren't you being honest anyway? Because money is like the number one reason people get divorced. So you've got to be honest. If you plan on keeping the marriage, <laughs> you need to let your spouse know what's going on with the money. I mean, don't try to hide it. Just be honest. Mm -hmm. So true. I love that. Thank you for that. So that kind of wraps up for today. I want you guys to stay tuned for a five-minute activation Thank you so much, Larissa. How can people connect with you or find you if they want to get in touch with you? I mean, because you can work with anybody, right? That's right. You can call me at 770-451-6330, 770-451-6330, or you can go to my website, which is AbundantReturns, with an S, dot com. AbundantReturns.com. You can find out all kind of information on me and my business. You can, oh, get a great price, 10 bucks for books, the eBooks online, which is cheaper than getting them anywhere else. And there's just a multitude of uh, information on the website to help you understand what I do and how I can help you. Awesome. So they can get your books there. They can get information there. And then if they wanted to continue and to actually schedule with you, your number will be on the website as well. Is that right? Or they can schedule online. Both. Oh, they can yeah. schedule online. Of course mm -hmm. they can. Awesome. So AbundantReturns.com. We'll put that in the show notes. So you guys who are driving, don't worry. I got you. And mm -hmm. stay tuned for our five-minute activation. In the meantime, let's say goodbye to Larissa. Thank you so much, Larissa. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Goodbye. Well, guys, that's our episode for today. But before we go to our five minute activation, I promised you I'd tell you how to become a prosperous couple. So as I said before, it takes two powerful people to become a power couple. And we'd love to have you and your partner join the Prosperity Club. Whether you want to start with the free version or jump right into the paid membership, 
it's a great value for your time and money. And it's really important that you both join because there are questionnaires and things you're going to complete that you'll have the answers to. But what's awesome is that you can share it with your partner so that you guys can get to know each other better in love and money. So for just $97, you'd get the Prosperity Club annual membership. You get five day prosperity challenge. You'll get crash course in prosperity seven day course. You'll also get the Prosperity Club monthly activities and accountability emails. And then you get the private Facebook group. So only the special insiders get special offers on the Prosperity Club membership and new courses that come out. So you've got to join the private Facebook group. So go to kanaycorder.com slash Facebook to join the private Facebook group and then go to kanaycorder.com slash prosperity dash club to get your membership today. That's kanaycorder.com slash prosperity dash club. But all of that will be in the show notes. So go ahead and check them out and I'll see you in the club. It's time for five minute activation, a quick financial therapy session to get you activated and on your way to increasing the love and money in your marriage. So can I get five minutes of your time? Just five minutes for a financial therapy activation. In today's five minute activation, we're going to talk about taxation peace. Let's face it, nobody wants to pay more than their fair share of taxes. No debates there, right? In fact, I'd go as far as to say that nobody really wants to pay taxes at all. However, we know that taxes have their place in society. Even though they're uncomfortable when we have to pay them, the things that taxation dollars pay for make us comfortable. Taxes happen on the federal as well as on the local level. They pay for health care, military, and social security on the federal side, and road repairs, civil servants' salaries, and parks and local amenities. But that still doesn't take away from that aching feeling that comes when we pay taxes. That's our emotions. Today, I'm going to give you a few tips or ideas on maybe how you can curb those emotions and look at the bigger purpose. One big reason we feel uncomfortable about our taxes is because we don't control what happens with the money. Once it leaves our hands or our accounts, it's gone. And we don't really feel fulfilled the way we do with other purchases because those we do have some control over and the thing we purchased maybe gave us some fulfillment but we don't directly connect nicely paved roads with the taxes that we paid. But maybe we should, because that could be helpful. This goes back to controlling the controllable. If you are aware that you don't have control over the money, then the next thing you must do is accept that. Once you accept it, consider how you can adjust it. Is there any way you can control the money or at least influence it. Is there any way you can control your emotions? So that's this idea that if you connect your taxes with the things that are happening around you, then that may make you feel a little bit more fulfilled. Now, some of us think that we control it by not paying taxes at all. This strategy usually comes back to haunt you. The IRS catches up eventually. And when they do, it comes with penalties and consequences that do not feel good. When you try to avoid taxes, you put yourself in a position to suffer. But if you are willing to sacrifice, you will never have to suffer. You've probably heard me say that before. I once knew a financial advisor who used to say his job is to make sure his clients pay more taxes than they did last year. Note, the other side of this is that he also helps his clients have clear tax strategies to never pay more than their fair share, to always lower their tax bill by investing in the most tax efficient way. Now back to emotions about having control. Of course, voting is a big part of controlling our tax dollars. If we put people in place that share our values, 
we feel more in control because we can trust them. We trust them to do the right things with our hard earned dollars. If you are uncomfortable paying taxes, if you are confused about your options, be sure to get sound advice from a professional who specializes in your situation. There are different strategies for different people. There is no one size fits all tax strategy. Every lifestyle has a different benefit. Couples, business owners, retirees, students, etc. Find a tax professional that knows your lifestyle and start planning ahead. I have a friend who was pregnant and her doctor told her that she would need to induce her labor. She was given a window of something like December 30th to January 3rd. And she chose December 30th to get the tax benefits that came with having a child. She was thinking ahead. There are so many different ways you can plan, but here are a few tips that I want to give you. Make sure that you gain taxation peace by associating the things around you with your tax payment. Be aware of what you control. Take action to control it. Be clear on your lifestyle. Find a professional you can trust that specializes in your lifestyle, even if that means professional software. And last tip, plan ahead. You shouldn't wait until the year is over to think about your tax planning. Do it before the year ends so you don't miss out on any benefits. Sometimes late is never. So that's our five minute activation for today. I'll see you guys sooner. Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you want more love and money conversations, subscribe to this podcast. Also, tell your friends about us. I'll see you next episode. But in the meantime, head on over to kenequarter.com for more tips, tools, and resources. And go ahead and leave us a comment if you like. We'd love to hear from you. This show is not to replace professional counsel. The best advice comes from a professional you know. The topics discussed in this podcast are general in nature and are for entertainment and informational purposes only. We encourage you to meet with a professional to discuss your specific situation, whether financial or therapeutic. That's all for now. I'll see you sooner. Remember, no matter what anybody ever tells you, you can have wealth in all of its forms. Believe it and you will soon see it.